Hey guys, so today I'm going to turn to very disturbing news. Now, I can't cover this all in one video, but in this video I'm going to focus on the Mythic Magic Invitationals. My biggest point of criticism is they're picking people using favoritism. There is no reason that somebody like Numat, I don't particularly enjoy his streams, but I know many people do. He does not get invited. Our good friend Emma Handy does get invited. And you know the background on Emma, which I have screenshots on. She is not the nicest. I don't know if uh, she identifies as a she or her. Um, I double check on that a little later. But non-binary. But regardless, magic player Emma has had a past history of posting on Pojo some very disturbing things. I'll leave it at that. Which are now deleted, but luckily that's why we have screenshots. And she's also the one to get Travis Wu and Magic for Bad. Banned. Everyone there was banned for six months. Travis Wu had his Pro Tour invitation taken away. Not that it matters now because those don't matter anymore. The criteria of selecting one individual over another individual, especially outside of the MPL, the Magic Players League, is quite bad. And a lot of the numbers are fake. The Twitch numbers are verifiably fake. Um, they have not come out to defend themselves. But you don't go from 50,000 people watching to 2,000 in the span of less than a month. Yeah, there's initial hype and there's an initial excitement, but 2,000 people on Twitch watching is not very much. The worst League of Legends player, the, I'm, and he doesn't even need to speak English, he can speak Korean. And I'm using he because every League of Legends pro player in the LCS is a male. So I'm not using he to offend people, I'm using he because there are just binary he's in League of Legends right now. So how do they go about choosing and picking who they want to invite? And that's very dangerous. 32, there's 68 spots. 32 of the spots are reserved for basically people in the MPL. Uh, now, of course, the MPL has changed recently. There's only 32. So for free people, Gary Thompson decided to leave because he didn't like how things were going. Owen was accused of harassment, and we don't know what's going on with Owen. There's no information. It's been over a month at least, and there's been no information. And then, of course, we had Yuya Watanabe, who was banned for cheating. Uh, we replaced them with a streamer, a Hearthstone streamer, or a former Hearthstone streamer, whose elo is practically zero, or I guess at base, because he's never won anything before. We replaced him with Autumn. Autumn was a, not, it identifies as a non-binary, and we replaced one of them with Jessica Epstein, who is someone who has only won one GP, has only topped one GP, may have only attended one GP, to be frank with you, and she won it with two other guys, it was a team GP. Uh, the other two other guys were, of course, not invited to the MPL, but, you know, who cares about that stuff, right? So how do they go about um, picking and choosing who gets invited? And, of course, there's going to be a lot of butthurt people who are not invited. So let me put that out there. Magic pros are only upset when it affects their bottom line. And you can see that this is absolutely affecting the bottom line. If there's 68 spots and the prize pool is $750,000, theoretically, the average winning is over $10,000, right? Now, I'm not counting hotel, meal, sponsorship, and all of this stuff. If you count all of that, the average person would probably take home $20,000, $25,000 of value, um, mostly cash. This is very upsetting to pros because back in the Odin days, which was only a few years ago, a pro could at best hope to make $20,000. Now, 
Now, when you have a streamer or you have um, somebody like Emma, Magic player Emma, you have a situation where you're encouraging people to behave a certain way. Um, if you can get people banned, you will be invited to the Mythic Invitational. I will point blanks tell you that. If you can screenshot bad things and while, you know, Jeff Hoogland or Numat to the Numi, you know, I don't watch them, but they're very popular streamers. The numbers are Jim Davis. The numbers will indicate that these are the people who, if your goal was to get as many Twitch people watching at the same time, they could bring their fan base with them and you wouldn't have the problem of 2,000 viewers a video. Like 2,000 is very bad. And I was looking at Twitch and... You know, I really did want to give MTG Arena a try because it's fun. It reminds me a lot of Duels of the Planeswalker, which many of you don't know, but I was sponsored by Wizard of the Coast at that time to make videos of Duels of the Planeswalker, but then the server crashed for six months and I forgot. Well, I made videos, but, I mean, the server crashed. I can't log in, so what was the point? You have a system that is in totally broken. It's not even, like, fixable, in my opinion. And the reason it's not fixable is you don't have a criteria. You don't have transparency on how selection is happening. Like you don't know why Emma got invited and Numat did not. You don't know why Jeff Hoogland is not invited. Although you might say, oh, Jeff Hoogland is a very mean person and he's a douchebag. And my argument would be, what about Numat? Now, Newmont has a very, very loyal following, and he has a great... Or Jim Davis. There are plenty of other people out there who have more views, who have more subscribers, who have more pull than somebody like Emma or a lot of these people on the list. I looked at one of them, and some of these people, I don't believe play Magic. <laughs> like, I, I looked at each of them, and I went and read that they only recently began. It's kind of like a whole MTG Mayfair thing where she streamed for 30 hours and then that was good enough to get invited. When Jeff Hoogland streams 30 hours a week plus, maybe he streams 30 hours in one weekend and he doesn't get invited. It's like, uh. okay, so day nine, Maria, we have Becca, we have Paul, we have Cedric, we have Alistai, and we have Marshall. That's the casting team. Obviously, no one gives a blank about them because your numbers are down. I'll put it this way. The numbers went from 50 to 2. So imagine that we're a business and we had 50 clients a month buy our cake. We, had, we were making 50 wedding cakes a month. Then suddenly, in the span of one month, then the very next month, we went down to two wedding cakes. We would be out of effing business, Right? Right? Like, we were used to selling 50 wedding cakes when we had our grand opening. Now, we don't expect to sell 50 all the time because it's our grand opening. And maybe we discounted or cheated a little bit, you know? Wink, wink, Wizard of the Ghost. But we'd at least expect to sell 20 or something, right? One a day, maybe one a week. Or, I mean, we'd at least be able to sell five, right? 5,000. But no, we're down to 2,000. Um... So let me go ahead and just say this. No one is interested in watching this crap. It's so boring. Watch League of Legends. I, I'm not a big fan of Fortnite. We started carrying Fortnite in my e-commerce store. We have like Fortnite nerf, nerf guns with like the llama and stuff. And they sell really well. I don't get Fortnite, but I do know that when we carry it, it sells. We also picked up another 10,000 packs of stuff, which I'll open. We have unlimited packs, basically. It's not 10,000. That's probably too much. With Pokemon, it's probably 6,000 total that we have in inventory now. And we got some older packs, too. We actually have a Future Sight pack. All right, but staying on topic. Staying on topic. You have a system where it's not transparent. No one knows how to be invited. It's not based on numbers or followers or any viewership. or it's not. It's not based on any of this skill. I mean, I guess skill would be the primary one that I left out, right? It's just based on how much they like you. And if they don't like you, they will ban you for life. 
And that's a very dangerous. So the whole unsleeve media thing really set me off on. I didn't support. So if you follow the original thing, I didn't support Jeremy unsleeve media, the quartering in the beginning, because I was actually on Christina's side, Christine Sprankle's side, who has graced us with her cosplay now. She's coming back to cosplay now that Jeremy's gone. So that's good. I mean, not that Jeremy, you know, I would rather keep Jeremy, but it's good that she feels safe now. You have a sy system where no one knows who gets invited, what the criteria is, or, or any of this stuff. And you know where that $750,000 goes, or the 32 times $75,000, how much is that? $2.4 million? Where does the $100 million investment go? It goes to these people. It does not go to better card stock. It does not go to cheaper cards. It does not go to better cards. It not, does not go to creative team. It doesn't go to your art, art team. It just goes to these people. And it's like when you work at a company and your boss favors an employee, maybe because they're related or maybe because he's friends with a friend. And you don't know why. That this employee keeps getting bonuses and keeps getting thousands and thousands of dollars. And you don't can't even get a basic raise when you, in fact, do everything that you do. It's that situation where you have a boss and they're making decisions not based on data, statistics, or customer feedback. They're taking a product and they're giving money to their niece or their nephew or their brother-in-law. And that's what's happening here. It's quite sad that this is true. Um, I mean, really, any business that goes from fifth, selling 50000 of something to 2000 of something, that's what they're selling. They're selling a brand. Yes, it's a grand opening to your bakery. And yes, you sold 50 wedding cakes the first month, which is fantastic. And that will give you a little leeway. But you cannot sell two wedding cakes the next month. You absolutely cannot sell that. And these people, are these people really going to give us, you know, more views and make us more? No, they're just taking, they're stealing our money. These people are no different than Alex Bercini, honestly. I tell you this, our card quality is still very poor. Card prices are increasing. You may not feel this, but from the distributor level, it went up from 72 to 76, and now it's 78.50 for War of the Spark. When will it stop going up? Who knows? For like... Who knows when I would not be at all surprised that if we break $80 by the end of this year, that would be very reasonable, a box of standard. So when you're used to paying 72 or 74, paying 80 a box just feels bad because you're only selling a box for hundred. You cannot pass on it to the customers. Or even if you do, you just get eaten up by Amazon. Or you'll get eaten up by Sports and More or Distributors or Rudy or somebody will eat you up. So you have to remain competitive, but a lot of times that means you don't make any money. It's seventy-eight fifty right now, guys, a box. Do the price of cardboard really go up that much? I don't think so. So that's where all the money is going. All the money is being funneled to these guys. And you might think, oh, they're a net positive on it. Two thousand viewers PewDiePie he has if he streamed his pinky finger for two hours I guarantee you he would have more than 2,000 viewers the whole time and these people can't keep 2,000 viewers at any point in time so I don't know I really do not know um, what is going on with them, except that their eSports is about to fail. The MPL will fail. And I can tell you why it's going to fail, because it comes down to dollars and cents. So imagine a sponsorship like Coca-Cola, because eventually you're going to need to bring some sponsorship. You're going to have to bring outside money in. You can't just... Right now, there are no Geico's like League of Legends or Coca-Cola's or um, that... That sandwich shop that's always on League of Legends with uh, Jersey Mike's. <laughs> there's none of these people. There's no Jersey logos. There's no card logo sleeves. It's just Magic the Gathering funnel, funneling money here. And that's a problem. 
Because where is the money coming from, guys? Oh, right, me and you. So that's why the cardboard quality is still very low. The foils come out all bent. And if you ever open Pokemon product, I can tell you 100% because I, Detective Pikachu was very big for my business. We sell, we cannot, I mean, Detective Pikachu just blew up my business overnight. Thank you, Detective Pikachu and Ryan, Ryan Reynolds. I never thought I would say thank you to Ryan, Ryan Reynolds, but nonetheless, uh, focus, focus. All right, in conclusion, the MPL is trash, the Mythic Invitation is trash, and we're spending a ton of money. So Wizard of Coast isn't like, they're a profit-driven company. Once they realize that there's no profit in getting 2,000 people who would watch anyway, isn't Jeff Hoogland streams like 2,000? They're picking the wrong people. So let me, I'll, I'll just put out this way. A lot of people on this list, I mean, you see this, you see this, the PC way to say is, oh, I'm not saying anything against the people on this list. They all deserve to be there, but I hope that we can be more transparent in the future. F you guys, F you guys, because at the end of the day, what you really mean to say, but you're, you're too scared to say it is a lot of people don't deserve to be on this list. A lot of... The previous winner is not on this list. He can't even defend his title. I mean, in what sport... Even the WWE, which is fake, the, the, the winner, it's a title defense, right? What sport would not give the opportunity for the last winner to defend his title against a current, the current people? Magic the Gathering, eSports.